this video I want to show how I scanned this engine block using the POT2 scanner from Reverpoint. If you've seen my other videos on this channel you'll understand where this is going and why I bought the scanner in the first place to help me make my project track car. The block is one of the biggest scans I've done and in this video I wanted to show how it was completed and share my thought processes and workflow. Later on in this video I will analyse the results and see how well it came out. As always, none of this is fudged. It happened exactly how it happened. I'm deviating slightly from my previous videos, so let me know if this works out better or not. It is important with any project that you decide what you want to try and achieve. This determines what is a good or a bad scan. So here are the objectives. In my case, I want to transfer this scan into a CAD model. I also want to see what the scanner can do from a precision item such as this. Considerations. Experience teaches you you cannot scan this item in one go, it is too big and too detailed. Fusing large models can take the computer over 10 minutes to complete and can cause issues especially if you scan artifacts or have slight misalignments. Any mistakes or crashes due to low computer memory means that you will lose all your work. I will go over the methods I use to mitigate these issues shortly. Lastly, scanning at high resolution is not something you want to do on objects that you don't need to do it on, or that have a high surface area like this part. If you do, expect your computer to hate you, as you generate millions upon millions of points. Most computers can't handle over 10 million points anyway, in a single scan, so we have to compromise on detail. If there are any parts you really need to grab at 0.02mm accuracy, Follow the armature method and keep the high resolution scans focused on where you need them. So to do this scan I use what is called the armature method. As you can see it's multiple scans laid on top of a base or an armature. This armature is a brief scan to capture the unique locating points and the overall shape of the object. So that when our detailed scans are merged they can have something to lock onto. The final model is completely merged and it looks like it was done as one large scan. I will demonstrate this in its entirety, so let's crack on. The first job is to prepare the armature scan. Here is the engine block. As you can see, it's a bit too big to fit on the turntable. The surface is okay for scanning, but it's likely to need some increase in the gain settings. The main difficulty here will be all the recesses, as the scanner will have to look into these over a wide range of angles to capture all the detail. A view of the top shows a lot of unique features. I'll be sure to overlap all of the scans onto this face if I can. It will make alignment a lot easier. On the smaller side is the support leg mount, another good place to locate onto. The large side has a lot of features that can be seen, including the pump mounts and the aperture for the starter motor on the left. Detail like this is what's going to be important to capture with the armature. Lastly, expect the bore cavity to be tricky to scan. There are a lot of repeat features and depth. Indeed, the scan I initially performed was not so good. It can be done, but for me, the feature is so easy to replicate in CAD using hand measurements and technical data, so it's not really worth the effort. An armature scan doesn't need to take very long. As with the prior study, only the areas of importance need to be captured. Don't be afraid to step back and scan this object at a distance to ensure good coverage. Here is the finished article, as you can see it's far from perfect but that is the point. Now the detailed scans of each of the sides of the engine block can be done without fear of losing data or time with any missed scans. The main purpose of this guide is not to show you how to scan but to demonstrate the workflow so I will try and keep this brief. Once these scans are all gathered I process the raw data into meshes and save them as a batch of STL files. Here is the armature scan as a mesh. This is what is going to form the basis of all the locations for the detailed scans to latch onto. 
I find that merging meshes has a higher success rate than merging raw data. Don't ask me how it works, I just find that it does work. But by all means, experiment with your own workflows. Now to start the merging process. Yes, I am using an older version of the software because it just works and is more stable for me. 60% of the time, it works every time. Again, as before, feel free to do what works best for you. There is no correct way. So now it's just a case of adding the parts to each other and processing them, adding each one in turn. It doesn't matter if you make a mistake, keep the component files safe and simply try again until you get the desired effect. If you made a mistake and you need to rescan an area, you can do this very easily and not have to redo hours of work. Be sure to check the alignment has worked on every single stage. The software does bend and warp scans to fit, and if that happens, you can get compounded stacked errors and a totally deformed end result by using this method. So take your time and make sure it's right. These segments are sped up. This process all in all took about 20 minutes in total. If you want to skip ahead to the next stage, follow the timestamps. If you want to make sure I didn't cheat, keep watching. At last, this is the finished merge scan. Be sure to process and remesh the final result. Here is the finished item in Blender. Let's see how the scan came out. First job here is to align the model to the planes and the origin. If you don't know how to do this, I have made a video about this exact subject using Blender. So see the link in description to view this video. So yeah, it looks like a pretty good scan, plenty of detail. I'm pleased at how it came out apart from the inside, which I might add later. There are critical machined flat faces on the block, so it's an ideal time to have a look at another alignment method and to analyze the flatness of the scan. Do this by adding a plane as shown. If you flip the model over to the underside, the scan can be slowly dragged through the plane to analyse the orientation and flatness. Straight off the bat you can see that just by eyeballing the alignment it's pretty accurate. By slowly moving the scan up and down we're trying to get the whole face to disappear at the same time. Here you can see the near lower corner is a bit high so by adjusting the rotation of the scan you can get it to a high degree of accuracy. It takes a while but it's worth it. Once you get a happy medium, you can see how the scanner has interpreted the flatness. The approximate deviation over this face is about 0.3 millimeters, which is extremely impressive over the size of this part.
By rotating the plane 90 degrees, we can now align the gearbox mounting face to analyze the face's flatness. However, it looks like I got it about as good as it can get. This proves that the clutch housing face is completely perpendicular to the main bearing housing face, as well it should be. Again, the accuracy of this cannot be understated. Making the mean measurement, it is nigh on perfect and well within the expected limits of the machine face and the scanner's tolerance, being about 0.1 millimeters deviation here. Lastly, let's look at the cylinder head face. Notice that it's slanted or an angle to the main bearing face. But what should that measurement be? Let's prove this by using the most accurate method I have, which is a digital inclinometer. The device is calibrated to the desk and then the reading is 44.96 degrees. Back in Blender, the plane is reorientated at 45 degrees and moved along the y-axis to see how the scanned face looks. Now that is pretty impressive, but the plane can be rotated to achieve an even better fit to measure the scan itself. The result I came to was 44.64 degrees. Keep in mind this object was scanned with the standard accuracy setting and not the high resolution scan. But we're not done yet. Let's have a look at another important area which is the crankshaft bearing alignment. We can check the concentricity, i.e. how well the bearing slots are aligned and their size by adding a cylinder to the model. By editing the cylinder and cutting out the top half of the points, it can be turned into a gutter type shape. This can then be scaled up and down in a similar manner to which the planes were used to see how well the bearing slots are aligned. It's not perfect, but also it's not far off at all, about 0.5 millimeters in deviance. If a medium measurement is taken, the arc shows a diameter of 68.018 millimeters. Keep in mind the bearing shells that fit into these slots are not circular by design. Here are the measurements of the bearings that fit inside this recess. As you can see, this is pretty accurate as well. I'm going to wrap this video up here and finish with a conclusion. Firstly, no attempt to calibrate the scanner has been made yet. As you can see, the accuracy is just fine. I will get around to doing it, but I'm quite happy with it as it is right now. All of this was made using the standard scanner accuracy setting. The final model is over 10 million points and 490 megabytes. No computer that I have ever used could ever deal with this model if it had been scanned in high detail, so keep this in mind. The armature method works a treat. You sometimes get issues with overlapping, but it's way better than the alternative of trying to do it all in one go. I can come back to this model later and finish off the internals if I really need to. Accuracy is just so impressive. This wasn't the real aim of the video, but it's a nice bonus since it's the most important thing people talk about when they're looking at reverse engineering. I've used top-end scanning equipment and to achieve this level of detail over an object so large using such a small scanner with the armature method, it's pretty astounding if you ask me. As always, a light version of this model can be viewed on my Sketchfab page. The link is in the description. So I hope you've got something out of this video. Please take the time to check some of my others out if you like my work. Please also leave a comment in the area below if there's anything that I've missed and you want to see in future videos. Thank you for watching.